Another one like that, that I'd like to see more of all over this country, Howard Zinn mentioned that in the Depression in the 1930s, one way people kept their houses from being taken away from them and foreclosures by bankers and scammers was they just organized among themselves. So if somebody comes to kick you out of your house, the whole neighborhood, or at least some shock troops and activists, shows up and blocks the place and won't let you in to do it and calls the media or whatever. And they're doing that again in Boston, very successfully saving people's homes where the banks or the savings companies finally figure, oh shit, they're just gonna be there every time. Maybe we should negotiate. They're called City Life Vida Urbana, both an English and a Spanish name. So in many of these cases, the so-called struggle against relentless, corporate class war and oppression. And I hate to use radical cliches like class war, but that is what's going on right now. The upper, 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 the upper, upper class of multi-zillionaires is waging aggressive war against everyone else, including millionaires. You know, clear back in the Reagan era, his budget director, David Stockman, said we're working on the Brazilian model, which is one of the most unequal countries in the world, and the Brazilian model is here. So that's you know, one of the things we're struggling against, corruption and all that goes with it, because without, you know, you, get, you can't really even move on something like, let's not call it climate change, let's face it, it's climate collapse, until corruption is dealt with. So there's struggle, but some things like UK uncut and pranks, you know, it's not all a miserable struggle of the proletariat against the big, bad, fascist pigs, and, you know, we're going to do, we're going to have meetings, God damn it. And we're going to blog to people who already agree with us. <laughs> you know, some of these pranks are quite fun, actually. You know, there's always a, a good demonstration, there's always a celebratory attitude and meet interesting people. I knew when the Gulf War broke out, and I knew enough to take my bicycle to all the spontaneous shut down to downtown San Francisco so I could get around and escape the cops easily. I wound up up on the blockaded Bay Bridge and ran into somebody I went to high school with. You just never know with these things. So, <laughs> anyway, and you didn't even have to wait years to find everybody on Farcebook. I think part of the reason people are getting so into this now is people get older, oh no, the kids are teenagers and I've got us, I've got them on psych meds and they hate us anyway. And, oh, isn't it nice to reconnect with people from high school before all this shit was raining down on our heads? That's, that's part of the reason for that. And I think that's where it isn't Obama who failed as much as all his supporters failed him or the agenda of actually hoping for real change because so many people figured their job was done and just went back to, oh, moveon.org, that's all right. Oh, Facebook, great, my job is done. Instead of saying, I mean, we would have, you know, uh, the public option, the kind of health care people get in Canada and other civilized countries where the right to see a doctor is a basic human right by law, if there had been a million uninsured march on Washington and everybody hadn't stayed home. And instead, that was when this thing called the Tea Party, this fake grassroots movement fi financed by Texas oil barons, started getting all the media attention. They were crashing the town hall meetings of the Congress creatures and the Congress puppets, and nobody from the other side showed up to raise hell. And look what we got, a terrible health care bill and everything. So I guess a lot of this is preaching to the choir in this room, but then the challenge becomes, okay, how do you expand out of this room? How do you, well, expand the choir for no other no other way of putting it. How do you get other people into this? Because not everybody wants to go as deep as some people here do, but it doesn't mean that they can't help. I mean, one thing I always try to tell people is, you know, doing something is better than doing nothing. 
That's where you start. And not everybody is going to do the same thing or as much as some other people, but it doesn't mean that people should adopt a born-again, more radical-than-thou preacher attitude and put people down if they're not doing exactly what they're doing or as much as they're doing, because we need everybody to do something, basically. So, how, so what's the gateway drug for people like that? How do you get people into that? I mean, I've seen Michael Moore say, you got to go out and do something, and he never says what. Same with Ralph Nader, so I got to think, okay, what is the first step? What is the gateway drug? And for me, and I've said this at Spoken Word shows for years, you know, freedom of choice, only do this if you want to, but if you want to, just make a little vow to yourself. I'm not cooperating with corporations or their agenda anymore. They can't have me. This is something any individual can do. And then how do you not do that? Because you don't give them your money, start pulling your money away from them by not giving it to them. Well, most people here do that anyway, but, there's, but a lot of other people don't realize it's that simple to start unplugging from the corporate food chain. You don't have to make all these commitments people are maybe not ready to make. You just start and go from there because you know, I, I, for example, I haven't eaten at McDonald's in well over 30 years now. And that always gets applause, and I don't think I deserve it. It's not like it's difficult. <laughs> and there wasn't all the political stuff against McDonald's, and I just thought their food sucked. And I hated Ronald McDonald, and I knew they treated their employees really, really badly. So it's like, this is too humiliating. This isn't food. I don't have to go here anymore. But then comes the gateway drug. I say, okay, if I don't eat at McDonald's, why should I go to Burger King? And if I don't want to go to Burger King, why should I go to Wendy's? You know, supporting the independent stores that keep the money in the community instead of sending it all off to Texas or wherever. <laughs> And even when buying products at independent stores, I mean, it's kind of a no-brainer for most people in this room, but not for other people you might be talking to. You know, try not try to buy as few products made by cor known corporate predators as possible. I mean, does Coca-Cola taste as good as it did when you were a kid? Does Budweiser, or let alone Coors, taste anything like decent beer? Some of these are really obvious basically. So um, this all falls under the category I've said many, many times, uh, starting with the Gulf War, don't hate the media, become the media. And I don't just mean blogging and connecting digitally. That's one really good part of it, the zines we see here and everything else. But some of these things, it means going one-on-one -on -one with people you know, at home, school, work, family, they start talking anti-immigration bulls bullshit, for example, or Tea Party shit or whatever, don't just tune them out automatically as being rednecks, stupid, unreachable, whatever. Sit down and talk to them. And it can be stomach turning sometimes to listen to where they're coming from, although it's always good to learn how the other side comes to think the way they do and all, but sometimes it means planting seeds. You know, when Bush invaded Iraq, my then girlfriend talked to her arch-Republican stepmother about it and just pointed out how it was going to blow up in our faces, bring more violence on this country, crack the economy, and she eventually bought it. You know, sometimes people put you down and then wake up six months later and uh, they actually start to realize, you know, maybe you're right. I mean, it took a while with Vietnam. It's taking longer with these wars, in part because people aren't getting drafted, so you don't have as many people coming home in body bags right in everybody's face. Plus, we have a nice, lovable president instead of an evil Texas Nazi, so people thinking, oh, ding dong, Bush is gone. Now we can go to sleep. Now we can sleep easy again, and they just sleep. Happened with Clinton, too. And what did we get? We got NAFTA. We got the WTO. We got the Telecommunications Act of 1996, giving away the broadcast airwaves to Clear Channel and Fox News, where, I don't know how many of you know this, in earlier days, you couldn't get away with all this Rush Limbaugh, Ann Coulter, O'Reilly, Hannity, Glenn Beck bullshit because there was a law in the books called the Fairness Doctrine 
It was enacted in the 30s because of, uh, you know, right-wing preachers who supported Hitler were coming over the radio waves and stuff, like Father Coughlin and Amy Semple McPherson, who were just getting rich, just like the ones today do. So in came that law, but it had a 50-year limit on it. So it expired in the 80s. When Reagan was president, the Democratic Congress re passed a renewal back when there was still something of a difference between Democrats and Republicans. Reagan vetoed it, and they couldn't override.